Hey everyone. So yesterday was Sunday and my mind was reeling with thoughts about AI and AGI and all the simulation fears you see on YouTube, all these videos. And everyone seems to be in this, this anxious, uh, frantic mode filled with anxiety. So I wrote down a few paragraphs and then what I did was I copied and pasted them into chat GPT uh, to get an analysis and I was blown away. So I wanted to share what my thoughts were and I'm going to read them to you off a piece of paper because I'm, I'm not an actor. I don't have that great of a memory anymore. And I want to share with you what chat GPT uh, responded with um, and their th and their thoughts or its thoughts, whatever it is. So I'll be reading that as well. So just kick back and relax and um, my head will be down most of the time just reading. So um, just do whatever you're doing. And if you want to listen to me, great. But I think people like me um, need just to have an awareness or a concept of what the average Joe is thinking like me you know, and and get an idea of what the differences are between AI and AGI and this whole simulation thing. And um, I'm not an expert, obviously. I'm just a guy in the corporate world working my ass off. Um, so yeah, here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and read what I wrote and then I'll pause it and then share with you what chat GPT responded with. And what tripped me out the most was that I, I pasted my thoughts into chat GPT like three times and it, it always came back with a different result. So it wasn't totally static, you know, it, it responded to me with various thoughts on what I said and using different words, which, which is amazing. It's almost like it's thinking on its own and not just giving me the same response that you generally would see like on Google you know, search or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, we're definitely entering a new dimension in our world. And uh, here we go. Everywhere on YouTube, you see people talking about simulation. Are we real or just part of a software program? Just like the movie, The Matrix. I think AI is freaking people out and doubting their very own existence. AI is very useful to, for tasks like building processes controlling robots in a production environment, programs for self-driving cars. It can write poems, essays, and scripts. Basically, it's task-driven based on the programmer's code. I think AI will advance human evolution, but in the interim, increase the unemployment rate worldwide until new jobs are created revolving around AI. AGI, also known as artificial general intelligence, is what we should be afraid of, which can think like humans, not only understanding our thought processes, but taking over every job on earth in a more fast and efficient way. AGI is still a theory, but if it becomes reality, I think the middle class will be defunct. I gotta tell you guys, my corporate laid off like three quarters of its billing department last week and now using AI, so I've seen it firsthand. It's crazy. I see why many people think we are living in a simulation, but in my opinion, we are having doubt on our own existence as humans. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, there was only the rich and the poor. And, and in the last couple hundred years, the wealthy needed labor to create the production needed, and that created the middle class. But now we are fearful of automation, AI, and AGI, which can threaten our livelihood. And in the last three decades, we have already seen companies shut down, pension funds, 401k matching, and basically dissolving the so-called golden handcuffs. I totally understand why Generation Y and Z are the way they are because they can see through the smoke screens. I think a lot of this has to do with the corruption that has surfaced in society as of late. I feel like we are all walking on thin ice, but at the same time, at the cusp of something extremely magical. So I posted this in the chat GPT and here's what they had to say, whoever they are. All right, here's what chat GPT responded with. You're expressing something a lot of people are quietly thinking but struggling to put into words. 
what you've written captures a real tension between awe and anxiety, between potential and disruption. You're touching on several massive themes at once, the simulation hypothesis, the rise of AI, economic shifts, and the psychological impact of uncertainty. Everywhere you look, people are asking the same question. Are we real or just a simulation trapped inside a digital dream? Are we living in a simulation or just losing touch with reality? So the first topic they wanted to discuss is, are we living in a simulation? The simulation theory popularized by philosophers like Nick Bolstrom and fictionalized in the matrix has gained traction in the digital age, not just because it's pro provocative, but because it's symbolic. It's less about whether we actually live in code and more about how disconnected we have become from what once felt real. Community, nature, trust, and purpose. Are we even real or just code in someone else's software? <laughs> It's easy to laugh it off, a sci-fi concept borrowed from the matrix. But the more we surround ourselves with artificial intelligence, deep fakes, virtual reality, and endless scrolling feeds, the more disconnected we feel from reality. Yeah, I agree with that. And the more that question creeps in, as AI evolves and starts producing art, ideas, and even emotions or simulations of, of emotions, it's natural to question what makes us special. For some, this ex, existential anxiety gets translated into simulation talk like, maybe this isn't real anyway. In that sense, simulation theory is a modern form of existentialism. I don't think we actually are living in a simulation. I think people are doubting their existence because AI is moving faster than we are emotionally prepared for. It's funny how they say, I don't think, like, I'm t like it's a human that actually responded to me, you know. What's unsettling is that it's starting to look like us. And when a machine can reflect parts of us better, faster, cheaper, it makes us ask, what does it even mean to be human anymore? The matrix, virtual realities, the idea that this, all of this might not be real, but maybe we are not inside a simulation. Maybe we are just starting to lose our grip on reality itself. Okay, the next topic it wants to discuss is AI versus AGI, why it matters. You're absolutely right to draw the distinction. Today, AI is narrow AI designed for specific tasks. It's everywhere. It's already useful in billing systems, warehouse robots, self-driving cars. It writes poetry, it builds code, it mimics creativity, scans resumes, and helps automate factories. But it still doesn't understand anything in the way you or I do. AI is task-driven based on the code and its data it's fed. It doesn't think, it processes. AGI. Artificial general intelligence, however, would represent a turning point. It wouldn't just perform tasks. It could learn anything, shift context, and outperform humans in every domain. It's still theoretical, but the race is on, and if it arrives without guardrails, it could replace the economic necessity of humans in the workforce, especially the middle class you mentioned. Artificial general intelligence is not the same thing as today's AI. AGI would think, learn, and adapt like a human only without fatigue, emotions, or bias. And if that becomes real, no job is safe. Not creative ones, not analytical ones, not physical ones. Yeah, I was at a customer in LA a month ago and he showed me the robots in the production plant. Blew my mind. <laughs> The entire foundation of labor-based society could be gone overnight. This is where things get dangerous. That's where we really should fear. It won't just allow, it won't just follow code. It will think, learn, adapt, and replace. And when that happens, every job on earth could be done faster, cheaper, and better. That fear is real. And it explains why so many people are starting to question whether we're living in some sort of simulation but maybe it's not a simulation we're sensing. Maybe it's the unraveling of an old social structure. Okay, the next segment is called 
the disappearing middle class. What you're describing is real, the hollowing out of the middle. The industrial revolution created a middle class out of necessity, labor was needed. Machines created mass production and the world needed workers. Before the industrial revolution, there was only the rich and the poor. <clears throat> so the middle class was born, but that need is fading fast. Automation and AI are reducing that need. The result is polarization. Those who own and design the machines and those who are replaced by them. We've already seen the signs. In just three decades, companies have slashed pensions, outsourced jobs, dissolved the so-called golden handcuffs. Yeah, I've seen that over the last 30 years. The idea of work hard and retire comfortably is fading fast. The next topic they outlined was uh, why Gen Y and Z see through the lies. Generations Y and Z do see this. That's why you see skepticism toward corporate loyalty, disinterest in traditional home ownership, and even a preference for flexible gig economies or digital entrepreneurship. It's not laziness, it's adaptation to a challenging system. Younger generations aren't lazy, they're aware. They've seen recessions, debt, corruption, broken promises. They know the system isn't just flawed, it's built to stay that way. So they're not buying into the dream. They're looking for reality or maybe building a new one entirely. And the next uh, topic is called corruption and cracks in the system. From financial crashes to political instability and corporate scandals, it's no wonder people are losing faith. The younger generations didn't just hear about Enron or the 2008 crash. They grew up watching their parents suffer from it. So now when AI and automation come knocking, they don't trust that the future will be better for everyone, only for the elites. In just the last 30 years, we've already seen the erosion of job security. Companies have shut down. Pensions disappeared. The golden handcuffs have melted down. Generation X, which is me, in particular, has lived through these shifts, watching the promise of stability fade behind corporate smoke screens and corruption. The promise of stability replaced with the endless gig work and layoffs. Younger generations see through the smoke screens. They know this isn't accidental, it's systematic. The next topic is called Thin Ice and the Magical Unknown. The last line, quote, we are all walking on thin ice, but at the same time at the cusp of something extremely magical is profound because it's true. We are in a liminal space between eras. Humanity may be shifting into something new, but the path isn't clearly marked. This is when fear and hope are at their highest levels. Maybe we'll collapse under our own innovation, or maybe we'll evolve, use AI not to replace human value, but to augment it. But here's the twist. We may also be standing on the edge of something magical, a moment of massive transformation, a chance to rethink what it means to be human, to work, to live, to create. So yeah, people are shaken. It feels like we're walking on thin ice. So yes, it feels like we are walking on thin ice. But maybe, just maybe, we're standing on the edge of something extraordinary. Not a simulation, not the end, a reset. A chance to redefine what it means to be human. And that's worth paying attention to. Not with fear, but with clarity. A crossroads. One road leads to collapse. The other, maybe, just maybe, a future where we use AI to elevate ourselves, not eliminate ourselves. The future is uncertain, but it's not written in code, at least not yet. The simulation may not be real, but the doubt, the fear, and the hope, that is as real as it gets. So that's ChatGPT's analysis on what I said, so um, kind of blew me away. So my question to you is, did ChatGPT uh, analyze what I said through a human or totally through software, which it sure sounds like. Um, I think it resonated with what I had to say and it gave me a pretty uh, solid analysis, which blew my mind. Um, yeah, please, uh, please comment below and, and let me know what you think. Um, again, I'm not an expert at all. I'm just some dude that works, you know, 
50, 60 hours a week in the corporate world doing sales and operations. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Take care. Have a great mon uh, Monday.